Okay, the next person's written um, written us a little paragraph with a number of questions in it. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it all As to you. As we often have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we can go back to different parts of it if you if you sure, like. Sure. Sure. Okay. So they say. I understand that God's love is supposed to be able to enter us as we progress, but I suspect I'm a long way off from this. Mm -hmm. Does it really take a long time for, uh, for some of us? And do we just need to be patient? Are there some signs that can show us that we're just not getting it? I feel like I'm just not getting some really basic stuff. I'm really struggling with allowing myself to feel these emotions in the first place and scared that they will never end. Where do I start? Hmm. Yes, well, there's quite a lot of things in this question, isn't there? So mm. let's have a look at some of them. If you read the first couple of sentences first again, and we'll just go through some of what's affecting this person. Again, I feel it's a lady, so yeah. um, we'll talk about how, what's affecting her. So. Okay. I understand that God's love is supposed to be able to enter us as we progress, but I suspect I'm a long way off from this. Let's just look at, it's interesting terminology sometimes, how the terminology people use and how it actually influences their emotions without them really understanding the yep. influence. Yep. So this lady's basically saying that she understands something that she doesn't understand yet. And the, what she says she understands is that God's love is supposed to enter us. Uh -huh. as we progress. Yep. No, God's love isn't supposed to enter you as you progress. The reality is you can progress without any of God's love entering you. Yeah. So God's love isn't supposed to enter you as you progress. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And God's love it will enter you when you have a pure, sincere longing for that love to enter you. Yep. Of course, then you'll progress. <laughs> but of course, the problem is developing a pure, sincere longing for God's love to enter you. The other thing is she's saying that it's supposed to. She doesn't believe it does. Mm. She just has been told that it's supposed to, or she thinks she's been told that it's supposed to, which I've never done, because mm. I've never said that it's supposed to enter you as you progress. Because I've only ever said that it enters you when you have a sincere, pure longing for it to enter you. Yep. So. The whole concept that it's supposed to comes from this feeling that she has that, that she doesn't really believe in God's love in the first place. Right. So there's one major block to receiving God's love. Yeah. If your person doesn't have faith that God's love exists within them, mm -hmm. that, you know, sorry, within God to give to them, yeah. and doesn't have faith that they can long for God's love to enter them, then what happens is that they will probably not long for God's love. Mm. Whether they progress or not, they will not long for God's love. So the entering of God's love is dependent upon a sincere longing for that love to enter. Mm. And if you don't have that longing, God's love will not enter no matter how much you emotionally progress. By the way, your emotional progress will be slower as well because you'll have to change absolutely everything within your soul, causally, one by one. Whereas God's love as it comes can help you start to address causal emotions by softening you to them. Mm. So, so God's love can help you immensely in feeling causal emotion. But if you don't have any faith that God's love can enter you, then of course God's love en cannot enter you. Yep. It's quite that simple. So that's one aspect of her question. Mm. So let's look at the next sentence. Okay. Does it just take a really long time for some of us and we just need to be patient? So here's another problem. Yeah. This concept, and I think we've ra raised this concept a number of times in other FAQs, this concept that you just need to be patient and sooner or later something magical will happen yeah. and you'll make some kind of transition and then everything will work smoothly and wonderfully mm -hmm. is actually untrue. The only way in which anything change, changes inside of the soul is by the soul's will being exercised for the change to occur. So there is not some magical process or some patience that you need to have about the soul changing. You need to find what's going on inside of your soul that's resisting the change mm -hmm. and have a desire to do such a thing. You need to have a desire to allow such changes to occur. 
And unless the soul's will is exercised in that direction, you will not change. Mm. And it doesn't matter how patient you are, you won't change for a long time, <laughs> if at all. Yeah. Right. So this is something we need to, to also mention. But we must say that you need to have patience with yourself, which is different than having patience about the, the process of change. Okay. When I say patience with yourself, there are sometimes you just don't get things. And there's sometimes when it just, you need more diligent effort to get it. It's sort of like a person if they go to a university course and they start studying, let's say, high level mathematics, the average person would struggle. Yeah. Right? And, and they would need to have patience with themselves while still maintaining a desire to learn. And and using their will, presumably, to engage with learning. Correct. Yep. Now, that's different than having a patience of just sitting there and going, I'm not going to do anything, and I'm just going to wait for some magical thing that maybe God or someone else will bring to me so that I can finish up progressing. That's completely different. So one, one state is, I take full responsibility for my lack of progression. Mm -hmm. That is a person who takes responsibility for the use of their will. But I also need to be patient with myself in that state, yep. which is very different than having patience waiting for some other thing to occur outside of myself before I change. Uh -huh. Of course, anything that occurs outside of yourself can help you change, yep. but if you're resistive to change, it's not going to help you. Yep. You have to develop the qualities of humility, the quality of desire for change, a sincere and pure longing has to be developed that comes from within your soul to change. Just like a sincere, pure longing has to come from within your soul to connect to God's love. And that's not going to magically occur. It is something that you're going to have to develop with the exercise of your will. Yeah. Okay. Will we keep going? Yes. Are there some signs that can show us that we are just not getting it? Yes. Plenty of signs. In fact, um, you know, what this lady has said in this particular comment is, is a sign <laughs> that she's not getting the underlying principles of how the soul works. You see, and, and instead of being condemnatory about that, what we need to go is, okay, I'm obviously not getting something. I'm obviously not understanding at some level what's really going on with my soul. I, I, need, to, I need to understand that. If no change is occurring and I am stagnant, that is the best sign. Yeah. It's a great sign that, that I don't get something, that, that, I don't, that it's me that doesn't get something. And what most people do there is they blame their teacher or they blame God or they blame you know, anything other than themselves. But if we're really responsible, mm -hmm. we would say, well, actually, it's all dependent upon the use of my will. You see, from God's perspective, God wants you to make these changes. God loves you already. God wants to give you her love already. God is waiting for you to get into a condition where there's a sincere, pure desire inside of you to receive it. So from God's perspective, there's nothing to do with God as to why there's no change occurring. Yeah. God has everything in place. God's got laws in place to cause you to try to, to change. God is constantly trying to change you to bring you to the place where God created you to be, the, your, the pure expression of your pure personality and nature. Mm -hmm. So God, God's already got everything in place. If no change is occurring, it's because we're resistive to everything God's got in place. And we must acknowledge that. Right? We must acknowledge that to ourselves, firstly, that there must be resistance within us. And then we need to develop a desire through the use of our will, a desire to find what it is that's causing us to be resistive, mm -hmm. to find the suppression that's in our soul, to find the resistance in our soul, and start to process our way through it. Only we can do that. No one else can do that for us. God can't do that for us, and no one else can do it for us either. Many will might attempt to try if they are unloving, but they can't do it for us either. Yeah. The only people, person who can process their way through my emotions is me. Yeah. No one else can do it for me. And this is something that's beautiful because it shows you that God made us to be self-responsible 
individuals who come to see the power of exercising their own will. Mm. So I think it's a beautiful fact that this occurs. So any person who sort of says, oh, there'd be some kind of mysterious event that might occur or someone will come along and save me from myself and all of those kind of things, none of those things can happen. We can be saved from ourselves only by listening to other people who know how to progress and then engaging through faith those methods of progression. The majority of people don't do that, of course. They mm. don't engage it through faith or any other way. And unfor so, f unfortunately, they don't progress. Yeah. And yeah. The, there's a last statement she makes. There is. <laughs> you uh, wanted to raise another issue in what we just said? Uh, no, just um, uh, when she asks, are there some signs that can show us that we're just not getting it? From what you said, if there's no change in our life without extreme force of will, then that's, that's a sign that we're not getting it. That yes, yeah, and honestly there are many other signs. Yeah. Obviously the law of attraction in our life will not be changing. We'll be attracting the same events time after time with different people. You know, our life is not going to be happy, so we'll be experiencing, we'll be experiencing lo low amount of happiness in our lives. We'll often feel under attack. We'll often feel like, you know, things are not working well in our lives and we're not enjoying it. There's, there's so many signs. You could list hundreds and hundreds of them in the yeah. end, yeah. But, but it all results, it comes down or boils down to this one fact that our life isn't changing, changing. for the better. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> and if our life's not changing for the better, that's an indication that we're stagnant and we need, we, we are not exercising our will to adjust that particular state of affairs. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, let's read the, the yeah, end. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm no, just not getting some really basic stuff. Yes. I'm really struggling with allowing myself to feel these emotions in the first place and scared that they will never end. Yes. Where do I start? Well, what she has stated here is very interesting because if she listens to her own statements, she will see that fear is the dominant emotion. Mm-hmm. So fear is suppressing her desire to change. It's suppressing her desire to feel emotions. She is afraid that if she starts feeling emotions, it will never end, which is not a truth, but it is a fear that a lot of people have. Yeah. And so what she needs to do is start looking at all the addictions she has to prevent herself from feeling these fears. The fact that these fears are in play is an indication that she must have addictions yeah. to look after each one of these fears. Yeah. So, so what she needs to do is to start looking at the addictions that she has. And you, she can do that by every time she gets angry, noticing why she got angry. Mm -hmm. And there's an addiction, uh, something that wasn't met. Also, every time she feels good, she needs to look at that because there's probably something that happened that fed one of her addictions. Yeah. And, and if she allows herself to see every time she feels bad and every time she feels good, she will start acknowledging her addictions to herself. And once she starts acknowledging her addictions to herself, she has a chance to start to have a look at her fears that drive the addictions. Yeah. But already she has listed three in the question. She has. So, so that's where she could start. She yeah. could start with those three. Yeah. So yeah. what were they again, she said? Um, well, the last two is that she's... If you read the whole the, the statement from the beginning... I understand that God's love is supposed to be able to enter us as we progress, yes. but I suspect I'm a long way off from this. So one fear is that she, she doesn't have any fear, feeling whatsoever that God's love can really enter her as she progresses. Yeah. Yeah. And she also has a feeling that it's supposed to without her effort. Uh -huh. So that's a problem. Yes. <laughs> There's an addiction. Yeah. She, she, wants to be able to, she wants to be able to progress without any personal effort. Mm. So that's an addiction. That's, that's almost like saying, well, God's got to do all the work and then I'll progress. And that's not how it's going to work at all. Yeah. We need to do the work. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and then she says, does it just take a really long time for some of us and we need to be patient? Are there some signs that can show us that we're just not getting it? I feel like I'm just not getting some really basic stuff. I'm struggling with it. So the, there's one fear. Yep, yeah, that I'm not getting it. So fear that she's not getting some really basic stuff. Yep. Yeah. Struggling to allow herself to feel these emotions in the first place. So there's obviously fears that cause her to stop feeling emotions. Mm -hmm. And scared that they will never end. And that's, that's one of her one. primary fears. Yes. And again, 
So already she's identifying through her question, her fears, without even knowing that she's identified what her fears are that are preventing her progress. Yeah. Well, some are, so what's preventing her progress is evident from her question, and we find this quite a lot, Definitely. where a person asks the question, but in the question contains their own answer to their own question. Yeah. So in her case with her emotions, inside of her question she's showing that she has a thought that God should do it for her, mm -hmm. supposed to do it for her, and not much faith that that's the case. Yeah. She also is showing that she is quite afraid about processing through or feeling emotion. Mm -hmm. For one reason is that she feels that it's never going to end. Yeah. And she's also quite afraid about not understanding, yeah. about feeling like she's confused. And, and there's probably fears associated with that, associated feeling like a bit stupid and a bit dumb and not really, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Which are all fears. Mm -hmm. So already there's quite a long list of fears that she can identify from her own question. Yeah. And if she allowed herself to identify them and then look at the addiction she has to cover over these fears, what she does every day to make sure that she doesn't feel those things, yeah. then she'll go a long way to realising why she does not progress. Mm. Yeah. And you've actually given quite a lot of good advice about progression in, in this answer. So to recap, you've said that that the lack of faith is an issue and that we need to work on faith. A huge issue. Yeah. It's a huge, most people on earth have very little faith in God. Mm. We don't trust that God's built our soul just right. <laughs> we don't trust that God's built a, p a perfect person and we've only got errors in us from our environment. We, don't, we think somehow there's some intrinsic flaw that we were created with when that's not the case. We don't trust that. We don't have faith in that. Yeah. There's so many things about God we don't have faith in. We don't think or have faith that God is a good being that loves. We, we only believe God's someone like our mummy or daddy, you know, who loves us sometimes, but only when we do what, what mummy or daddy says. Yeah. Or in the case of God, only when we do what God says. Yeah. That's yeah. the only time we feel God's going to love us. Yeah. So there's a lot of false beliefs that we have in there, yeah. that we need to address and see. Otherwise, we won't develop a longing for God. So faith's one area to look at. A huge area. The next thing you talked about was personal responsibility. Yes. And the. So in other words, this whole concept that if I wait long enough, something will happen. No, if you wait long enough, you'll get old, decrepit and sick. And, and also, if you think about your day-to-day -day life, does anything ever happen when you just sit in one place? <laughs> no, generally not. <laughs> you know, Nothing really even good. to turn on the telly, you've got to lift up, go lift up your hand, go reach to the remote control, and at least switch a button. You've got yeah. to do something. Yeah. You yeah. know, just sitting and waiting for something to occur means that nothing is going to occur. Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah, and so that's what you talked about: the difference between like a passive kind of patience, where we're just waiting for something magical to happen to us that creates our progress yeah. versus a patience with self as we actively engage a process. Correct. Yeah. So you can actively engage a process and not get it straight away. It's a bit like when if you pick up a musical instrument right at the beginning and you try to play it, the very first things that come out of the musical instrument are generally not pleasant to listen to. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't have patience with yourself that you've just begun the process of learning, then you'll probably put down the musical instrument and never pick it up again. And it's very much the same with Divine Truth. We pick it up, we look at it, we're initially enthused by the intellectual concept of it, mm -hmm. but, but unfortunately what happens is we generally start to, start to try to play with it, you know, start to experience it or experiment with it, and then we get very confused very rapidly because we haven't connected to our soul yet, and there's a lot of things we don't understand about a soul. And at that point, most people go, oh, no, I think I'll put it down again. Yeah. Uh, rather than work, being patient with themselves and saying, no, I'm a learner. Mm -hmm. I'm going through a learning experience here. As long as I exercise my will to continue, I will get to the end of it yeah. eventually. And will is not the same as force. Yeah, because that's the other way that we can approach progression, isn't it? To be very forceful to with force ourselves, ourselves yeah. and self-punishing and hard upon ourselves. Yes. And I know one man who said to me, for the last six years, he said to me, I'm going to get it. I am eventually going to get it. And I said to the, to the man, I said, look, you know, you know you're not getting it at the moment, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you're really quite angry about not getting it. All you need to do is feel how angry you are about not getting it. And he hasn't done that yet. Yeah. Right. So of course he can't get it while he doesn't go through that emotion. Yeah. 
So, so this is what the problem is for many people. They are, you know, they feel they force themselves to to try to get it, but they're not getting it, and they have an emotion that they have to feel, but they don't feel it. Yeah. And that's the opening. Once they start to feel the emotion, and then they start getting things, then they realize, ah, oh, it was the emotion that caused me to not get it. It's ah. such a simple process, isn't it? We just need to keep feeling the next thing that comes up and yet often we're so used to trying to control and be in charge exactly. and get to a goal and a destination. Yeah. A yeah. child just feels the next thing that comes up. Yeah. They're not planning ahead for the future very much or looking at the past very much. They're just feeling the next emotion that comes up, whatever that emotion is. Now, a lot of children become damaged because of the childhood suppression, but if a child is left in a, in a pure state in that regard, it can process through every emotion very, very rapidly yeah. within, within hours. Yeah. It's all done. Yeah. And, and this, is where, this is where we as adults have the capacity to do that. But unfortunately, because of suppression and resistance and our belief systems and our intellect, we believe you know, in hardly any principles about how the soul functions. You know, we don't have any understanding about how our, our own soul functions. Yeah. And as a result, we don't understand preclusion or absorption or progression or dominance or, you know, resistance or suppression or any of these concepts of the soul. We don't understand any of them. We don't understand presence and these kind of concepts. And so as a result, we're, we're there trying to struggle with it all intellectually, not understanding any of the principles that govern our soul, believing, in fact, most of the time believing, that n none of it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of times I've talked to people who say, I don't understand why I'm progressing, and I say to them, well, it's because you don't understand the soul. You don't believe that feeling and emotion is going to help you progress. And they go, yes, I do. And I said, no, you don't, because you don't let yourself feel any emotion. So how would you, yeah. how can you understand when you haven't let yourself feel one? You know? uh, just to clarify there, you meant the person who said, I don't understand why I'm not progressing? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Said, well, I'm not progressing, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Just... Yeah, and so, you know, um, I feel a lot of people are in this state where they don't understand what's going on um, because they have no understanding of how the soul works. Yeah. And as a result, they're still, they're still holding on quite strongly to the concept that they can intellectually force change, mm. uh, which is not a soul quality. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so that's some of the other th things that you said in answer to this question was that... Um, Obviously, we know we're stagnant or we're not getting it when there's no change happening in our lives. Correct. But then there's this issue of having a will and a desire for change. And if we're not changing, we obviously don't have the desire. Mm -hmm. And that's because of fear. And we need to start feeling anger and fear and addiction. Yes. Yeah. So fear is a primary reason why we don't change. And fear is covered over, like a, like a smoothed over, by addiction. Mm -hmm. And... and when we get angry, it's a demonstration when our addictions are not getting met. Yeah. So instead of, instead of our addiction not getting met so we feel some fear, what we do is revert, we revert to rage. Mm -hmm. and, and when we get our addictions met, we go, oh, isn't the world lovely and beautiful and isn't it everybody lovely and beautiful and oh, I have so many nice friends and everything's wonderful. And we tell ourselves a whole heap of crap about our life yeah. uh, because we want our addictions met because our addictions help us to overcome our fears. Yeah. And it's only when we're brave enough to look at the rage that we have and look at our addictions and then start to examine our fears that true progression will occur. And in fact, the biggest work that most people on this planet will need to do is working through their fears. Mm -hmm. If you're not prepared to work through your fear, you have no way of progressing. Simple as that. There's no way you can progress without working through fear. Mm -hmm. And most people don't want to because they feel it's too painful mm. and they're not prepared to feel pain. But the irony is every time you suppress a fear, uh, physical pain results. Yeah. So now you're creating more pain. Yeah. And this is a sad state of humanity because we don't understand how the soul functions. We even believe that disease is not of our own creation. Mm. And it is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. More questions we're going to ask you about fear specifically sure. as time as we as go progress. through this series. Yeah. yeah. Like, so. I think we've now up to 150 or 200 yes. questions in this series already and, and the reality is I think we'll be going quite some time yeah. answering people's <laughs> emotional questions, yeah. which isn't a bad thing because in the end, you know, we need to learn to become emotional beings who don't judge emotion and who allow emotions to occur and who allows emotions to flow. 
we need to learn how to do these things. But yeah. and and there is a uh, unfortunately a large amount of disinformation on this planet about emotion, and that we're going to have to wade our way, way through and sort out and eventually come to resolution of. And that's one of the main reasons why the majority of people on the planet never progress while they're on Earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's keep going. Thank no you for that one.